Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hello and welcome to Teach Me Tech. I'm your host, Laurel Gray, and I am joined today by the wonderful Peter Moriarty from IT Genius, who is joining us to talk a little bit about Google Keep today. Thank you for coming. Thanks so much for having me. Glad to be here. Um, it's awesome to have Peter here because he also hosts a few other shows that you can find on Bryn. One is Google Made Easy, and the other one is called Business in the Cloud. So he's a really natural fit here for Teach Me Tech. And often we'll go through individual technology tools and run through a full demonstration. Um, so it's great to have him here to run us through. I'm happy to help you. Happy to be here, help you get all Googled. Oh gosh, Googled and organized, and it's going to be so much fun. Totally. Woo woo. So, what are we going to talk about with Google Keep today? Here's what we're going to cover why you need to get your notes digital, which online note taking application you should choose. Should you split your personal and business notes? And this comes up a lot no matter what tool you're using. Learning the basics of Google Keep. Accessing Keep Notes on the go. Our favorite uses for Google Keep. Sharing Keep Notes with friends or colleagues. Using Keep to set intelligent reminders. And finally, integrating Keep Reminders with your calendar. So we've got quite a lot to cover, and I think we should just get started straight away. Let's jump into it. Woo-woo. So the first part of the discussion is always here on Teach Me Tech, a little bit out there, a little bit conceptual. In your experience, around being productive, being a business owner, managing a lot of different things in your life. Why do you need to get your notes completely digital? Really good question. Um, mm. What we find is, and this just isn't in the business world, this is in people's personal world as well, paper is one of those things that, well, I can tend to go missing from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as we all know, right? We've all had that piece of paper or that to-do list or that those notes that we jotted down, something we put on a sticky note, and you lost it. Now. That's not only the problem. The other issue is, well, if you're working between different locations, maybe you're at the office, you're at home, you write something down on a piece of paper, leave it at the office, walk out the door and go home, but all of a sudden you're prompted and you mm. need access to that later on. We're in a very digital world now and we run so much of our life from our smartphones that we're working with, well, we need a little bit more than just the pen and paper in the diary scenario. Now, mm. I'm not saying that someone who's kinesthetic and who really loves mm. writing notes on a piece of paper should stop doing that completely. But what I am saying is for the notes that you need to make sure you always have with you, well, that might be time to consider going digital instead of sticking with pen and paper. Mm. Yep. That's great. So you're, I mean, what I love about that is that you're not telling people just to get rid of their old system. I'd love it's to. It's about <laughs> kind of like, it's kind of bridging the gap, yeah. right? So there are ways that you can bridge between your old paper note taking system. Or for me, I went through a phase where I loved writing everything on index cards. Wow. Awesome. Um, yep. Yeah, still have about a million index cards in my apartment right now. Uh -huh. um, but you're not saying totally get rid of it, but it's about making that functional so that you can convert that to being a digital yeah. well, system. Yeah. Well, look, my philosophy on this is the tech system that you use has to be simple enough that it is frictionless. It has to be easy enough that you can actually use it and you want to use it and you enjoy the experience of using it as well. Because if it's cumbersome, then you're not going to enjoy the experience and that creativity that you need to express, well, you're going to be longing to go back to your pen and paper or your drawing or whatever it is that, that mm. works for you. Okay, so, all right, let me recap again. What you're actually saying is that Google Keep, for example, yeah. is so much fun, so interactive, yeah, it will allow you to use all those creative parts of your brain so that you don't need to rely on that aspect yeah, anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's one element of Google Keep. It's also got some great features to help you get productive. But the key thing is here that if right now you're doing things on pen and paper and you're not getting a great result with that, if you're losing notes, if you're finding yourself a little bit all over the place, if you want a simple place to quickly jot down notes that isn't you know, the notes app on your phone, which doesn't always synchronize to all of your devices. It isn't a piece of paper that you might lose. It isn't, uh, you know, writing something in an email and sending it to yourself. Well, that's where mm -hmm. Google Keep can kind of come into play. Yep. So it sounds like it's sort of bridging the gap between all those other systems that you already have for productivity as well. Yeah, totally. So mm. this is the easiest way to describe it is virtual sticky notes. This mm. is for the notes that you would normally jot down somewhere else on your machine, you know, 
contact card or in an email or, or maybe not even jot down at all, just try and remember them, uh, this is that system for you. You're still going to have a task management system which you use to coordinate your tasks with your team and you might be using something like Asana for that. You still have an email system for coordinating, communicating back and forward with your clients, but for your actual spot that you put your sticky notes, this is the digital version. Okay, perfect. Because sometimes I have to say, when I'm using Asana for task management, I have this problem that I'll try and put everything in there and it doesn't actually fit in any of the folders or the, the projects or buckets. And it makes me so frustrated because you just have random ideas and then you have to keep reviewing them. But yeah. Asana is not very much fun for, for putting those types of things. No, Asana and, and any task management system is really great once you've got an idea of your strategy, what the key deliverables are and what the tasks are. And you build those out to a project and you set deadlines mm. and you assign managers for those tasks. But if, if you've got an idea that's half formed and us being entrepreneurs and business mm. owners, we often have those lots of times during the day. Mm. Well, you need kind of a scratch pad to get that idea flushed out before you go putting it into a formalized system. Okay, cool. So you're saying basically it's a place for ideas. Yeah, totally. Excellent. That makes me feel so much better as, as well, thinking about it that way rather than feeling like I always have to convert everything in my mind to a specific task. Yeah, totally. Because um, sometimes it's not actually formed in your brain quite to that stage yet. Yeah, absolutely. This is mm -hmm. the place where it's okay if notes get a little bit lost because you've got a great search functionality to be able to bring them back if you need to. Okay, cool. So I'm sure you're going to share all those awesome features with us. Oh, yeah. Coming up. Um, so, look, I think there are probably quite a few different note-taking applications that are in the marketplace. Yeah. Walk me through a little bit of an overview. Sure. Well, the most popular one is obviously Evernote. And uh, I received the iPad 1 when it was first launched. On the launch day, I had it shipped uh, to my house, which was pretty cool. Wow. Uh, you know, a couple of months after they, uh, after they announced it on stage. And one of the first apps that was really ubiquitous for note-taking across all of your devices was Evernote. Mm -hmm. So I was able yep. to use uh, notes on my phone, notes on my iPad, uh, notes on my computer as well, and they all kind of synchronized together. Um, now, over the years, Evernote has risen to be a real leader in that space, and they've got a very, very large and at times complex application now with lots of bells mm -hmm. and whistle, whistles and options and all those kind of things. Uh, one of the downsides of Evernote is they've also, because they've received venture funding, they've put more of a focus on the commercial reality of them being in a business and needing to get some remuneration back from the millions mm. of users that are using their platform. So there's more of a focus on paid features and mm. they're slowly removing the free features and you know, effectively coercing you to upgrade to one of their paid plans. Um, mm. Now, one of the great things about um, Google Keep as an alternative to Evernote is Google is so well funded and supported by their advertising revenue, their Google Apps revenue, um, all of the other products that they have. They have automotive products, they have home automation products as well. Something like Google Keep is something that Google will keep around forever, but it doesn't yep. need to be charged. It's yep. a little bit like Gmail for them. Google have a billion users, well, just shy of a billion users on Gmail, but it's a free service because it's a way of getting people into the Google ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Keep is one of those tools as well. So it's free. It'll stay free forever, um, even though it does integrate with the rest of the Google apps as well. So you've got an advantage there. Yeah, beautiful. And I want to iterate as well. We're never really um, going to say you have to use a specific tool here on Teach Me Tech. Absolutely. Um, really, and I hope to do some episodes on Evernote because I know how popular it is. And some of those features are really amazing. What they're doing with OCR text reading and all of that is just is fantastic. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. one of the key benefits of Google Keep is that it's simple. Remember, like, mm -hmm. to be effective, sometimes you just need the bare basics. And this is true with a lot of the Google application suite that mm -hmm. at times it's lacking features that you think, wow, you know, I really wish I had that button mm -hmm. there or I'm used yep. to this button in another app. Why can't I do it with Google? But there's beauty in the simplicity. And that's one of the reasons I really love Keep is it just gets the basics done. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's, uh, for me, enough and why we recommend it. Yep, beautiful. Um, and as we always talk about, make sure that you're getting everything with single sign-on. So if it can be done with your Google Apps for work account or your free Gmail account and everything's single sign-in, you're more apt to actually use it. Yeah, totally. Security is a really good note to, uh, to uh, pause on there. Um, with your Google account, whether it's a Gmail account or whether it's a business Google Apps account, what you can do is set up second factor authentication. Uh, now, what that means is if you sign into your account from a new device that Google doesn't actually recognize, well, Google will send you a six-digit text message um, or a code to their authenticator app on your phone. 
And what that's going to do is make sure that it's actually you accessing your account. So if you're storing private and secure information inside Google Keep in the form mm -hmm. of notes or scans of personal documents, mm -hmm. uh, maybe personal notes, maybe business critical information, well, you can be sure that the uh, all of the data is actually safe. Um, and of course, it goes without saying, your connection between Google Keep and your computer is fully encrypted end-to-end -end encryption, which mm -hmm. means that anything stored in there is mm -hmm. safe from any hackers or anyone kind of trying to snoop on your Wi-Fi signal or anything like that. Yep, beautiful. And as I always say, it's so much safer to keep things in the digital version um, because imagine you lose your notebook or you lose some private stuff. That's, you know, Absolutely. it's gone forever. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a sad reality, but houses can burn down. Officers can, uh, you know, disappear. There are lots of risks to having physical copies of data. Uh, trusting a company like Google is safe because they're going to have your data stored in at least three geographically redundant locations at any one time. Um, so you can absolutely trust Google with not only the security but also the safety of your data there as well. Mm, very good point. Now, is there anything else that you find that your either your customers or people that you're interacting with? will use um, rather than Evernote, let's say, or Google Keep to take notes. Oh, what else like, is there? Like on your phone, you might have a note application. Yeah, there's definitely the Notes app on the um, on you know on iOS devices, um, and Android have their own versions of Notes apps as well. Um, one of the reasons that we recommend and we love Google Keep is um, simply because it's cross-platform compatible. Um, with all of Google's tools, they work on a Mac just as well as they work on a PC. They work on an Apple device, Apple phone, just as well as they do on an Android device. Um, probably not so much a Windows phone, but yeah. they do at least work <laughs> on the on the major phones. Uh, smart smartphones that you're going to find. Mm -hmm. Now, the key thing with Google technology is you want to get into sharing. You want to get into collaboration. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about that in this episode as well. So if I want to share my Google Keep Notes with somebody else um, who's working with me in the business or maybe at a personal level as well, as long as someone's got a Gmail address, it makes it super, super easy to share. Now, some of the other alternatives like Microsoft have their OneNote platform. Mm. Absolutely fantastic platform. Works really, really great for taking notes. Works across multiple devices as well. But sometimes the sharing doesn't quite work. You know, pick up a, an iOS device and the experience is not going to be the same as a Windows device. Mm. Working on the web is not going to be the same experience as working on a desktop device. And those small similarities, well, they can sometimes cause a little bit of friction. Google have always been 100% in the browser, so you mm. get exactly the same experience no matter what computer you're using, what, no matter what operating system you're using or device, you're going to get exactly the same consistency and experience. Uh, and that's really important to a lot of people for their productivity. Mm. So they're not learning something new every time they you know, work between different devices or you're not missing out on any features based on the device that you're using. Yeah, beautiful. Imagine all the decisions that we have to make every day. That's such a good point. Why would you want to just add another, voluntarily add another decision to your workflow throughout the day? Absolutely. Mm. Keep it simple. Mm. Keep it easy. Yeah, beautiful. Now, this is a big question, and we'd like to answer <laughs> these big nitty gritty ones before you actually go to your computer and start to set things up. Because, of course, Teach Me Tech is a great time for you to get out your laptop, your iPad, your computer, whatever, and get going straight away. In fact, some of you have probably already gone on and signed into Google Keep and started typing up stuff as we're talking, right? But the big question is, what do you do about your personal and your business stuff? Yeah. Because someone like you as well, you've got only not only one business, but multiple businesses that you're running technically, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Um, then you've got your personal side and then the different business arms coming off. Yeah. So how do you personally manage that? To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.